Hi everyone, it's Rax. I made a Path of Exile Beginner's Guide a couple of weeks ago, and that video was met with much better feedback than I thought, and honestly way more people watched that video than I thought that they would. And I've had people not only in that comment area, but also in my stream come by and said, Rax, you gotta keep going, you gotta make more videos, you gotta help me. So today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Today we're gonna go with part two, and part two is gonna cover only maps because that's probably the most important topic of the entire game, and we can make an entire video just on maps. Just like the last time, we're gonna go step by step. I'm gonna start off assuming that you know absolutely nothing. What we covered in the first video was getting through the campaign and the basic things that you need, like a loot filter and a guide and awakened PoE trade. We're gonna pick up right at the end there when you're done with the campaign and you're gonna start going through maps. I'm going to start off with the most basics of what you would do when you've got nothing, kind of the beginner era, and then what you do when you're, when you're a little bit more intermediate, when you've got some currency, you've got some decent gear. And finally, as far as I know, how to really, really juice your maps as much as possible so you can try to farm the mage bloods and the headhunters and the mirrors. Let's get started. Let's begin by covering two things that we covered last time, but that are imperative to understand for mapping. The first thing is Path of Exile is a free game, and one of the ways that they earn money for their game is by selling you stash tabs. One of the ones that I would consider mandatory for the end game, if you want to enjoy the game, is, of course, the map stash tab. So if you go to Options, Microtransaction, Shop, Stash Tabs, buying the map stash tab, which is currently on sale, is pretty much a must so we can organize our maps. The next thing that we covered last time, which we must understand, is in order to get credit for completing each map in our Atlas progression tree to get all 132 of these points to finally fill out our full build, you have to meet certain requirements based upon what tier the map is in. If you see 1 through 5, the color of them is white, 6 through 10 is yellow, and 11 through 16 is red. For the white maps, they must be at least blue or magic rarity when you complete them or it won't count. So, for example, if I ran this core map, it's blue, it would count. If I ran this one, it's yellow, which is more rare than blue, that counts. Okay, but if I ran this one, it would not count. So, the way that you would edit that is going into your currency tab right here and using an orb of transmutation to make it at least blue. And then as long as it doesn't have uh, an affix on there that's terrible for you, like reflect, you can run it. For the uh, yellow maps, they must be at least rare. So this one would work, this one would work, and this one would work as well. But just as an example, let's say I had this one and it's white. You got to throw it in here and use an orb of alchemy then you could run it and get credit for it. Finally, for the red ones, you need to use an ALK orb and then you need to corrupt it. So this Atoll map would not work. Back to the Currency tab, we start by making it yellow by using an orb of alchemy, and then we use a Val orb to corrupt it. Hopefully it stays as an Atoll map, it just became unidentified, which keeps the same modifiers. So as long as the ones that we could run before were fine, we're good to run this. It's yellow, it's corrupted. Now we could run it and get credit for it. Now you might be wondering, how can you tell in the map tab if you've done it or not? Well, first of all, it has an underline under the map that will show you if you've done it or not. But if you just had it randomly in your inventory and you're not sure if you've done this, if you mouse over it and hold Alt, it will tell you. You can see that I've completed it and therefore I've got the credit for it. So the entire idea, the first step in mapping is to understand that you want to do the Pokemon thing. You got to catch them all. You want to do all of the maps once to start building up your points. And here is the full thing and you can mouse over it. You can see the little check marks here after push, pressing G. Here are all the different maps that you want to move through. And then there are also some legendary maps here and there that you've got to find and we'll cover how to get those right now. All right, now let's talk about 
how to get as many free maps as we possibly can to help moving through all the maps much easier. And that comes from Commander Kirik, and this guy is absolutely your friend. There's two ways to access him. You can either throw him right here in your hideout and talk to him like this, or you can also talk to him from your map device by clicking on his icon right here. So he will offer you essentially free maps and he'll give you additional ones each day. And as you're playing along, there are also ways where you can re-roll all the maps that he has with things called scouting reports. So after you've looked through all of his free maps, then you could use a scouting report to re-roll them and get even more free maps to help you with your atlas completion. Remember, when you're looking at them, they're divided into the different tiers and Alt is your friend. So if you hold Alt, you can see which of them you've completed and which of them you haven't. You don't have to remember everything. Also remember the stipulations. All of these are going to have to be at least blue because they're the white ones. Well, they're pretty much always blue. Then these are going to have to all be at least yellow. They're all yellow, but the, the real tricky part is the red ones have to be yellow and corrupted to give you the credit. So this one would not work. This one would because it's corrupted. If you don't have this and you run it, you're not going to get credit for it. There's another way that Kirak helps you. This guy is really the man. If you go over here and you go to purchase items, he'll also sell maps to you. You can exchange currency and buy things that you need. So the general rule of thumb that I've always been told is uh, you might be wondering, well, which of these are a good deal and which of them aren't? Any map that doesn't cost chaos orbs should be good. So orbs of chance, orbs of alchemy, good, 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 good. Once you start to get into the chaos orb price range, at least for a regular league, that will probably be outside of your budget when you're first going through. But at a minimum, all the white ones and all the yellow ones that you don't have, you can just buy directly from him, which is pretty amazing. There's also another trick that you can do as you level up through the maps. So you might clear a lot of the ones, twos, threes, fours, fives. You're getting new maps to drop. And then eventually you're going to be like, all right, you kind of hit a wall where you're not getting any maps to drop that are a higher tier that allow you to keep going. There's a little trick that you can do. So if you go here and let's say uh, I really need an infested valley at level two. I just can't find it. You can go down a tier and then you can go to Glacier and you can take three of them. I'm actually going to take four, but let's just imagine that we had three of them. You can go to a vendor and you can sell them. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you three, you gave them three level one maps, they're going to give you a random level two map. That's an excellent way to try to magically conjure up a map that's one higher tier, especially one that you might need. But there's even a trickier way to do this. So if we have four of them, let me get out of this cell thing here, let me, let me organize them here. If we can think of every single way that we could possibly sell for glacier maps, then every single one of them will actually produce a different result. And then if you have five or six of them, it just gets more and more complicated. But for what I mean is, well, remember when I went one, two, three, I get a laboratory map. Instead of going one, two, three, what if I went one, two, four? One, two, four, okay, also gives me a laboratory map, bad example, okay? What if I went two, three, four? I get a forking river map. You see how different combinations of these maps will give you a different map. So if you have five or six of them, you can try all different kinds of combinations to try to get the map that you want. And eventually you have so many combinations, you'll be able to get it quite easily. So um, use, utilizing his free maps are an incredible way. Hold alt buying the maps from him as long as you're not spending chaos orbs and unless you're rich if you're rich go ahead and just spend the chaos orbs is a great way you can sell lower level maps um to get a higher one there is also a currency i forget which one it is a rerolls a map item as another one of the same tier 
So if I took a tier two map and I re-rolled it, just as an example here, let's take one out and let's grab a map here. Here we go. Okay, I have a glacier map. Okay, I don't need a glacier map. Pier map, perfect. That's the one that I needed. Then you can go roll it that way. That's another way. But as you're moving through your atlas tree, you might get a lot of them down. And then you might have a couple of these unique ones, like let's say the Coward's Trial, this legendary one, and you just can't find it. You might ask yourself, well, should I just go, go along my way until I find it, or should I find a way to get it? I would advise that you find a way to get it, because every single time that you run a map, you get more of these points. The more of the points that you spend in your Atlas Passive Tree, the more money you make. So it's better just to get it done right away if the map isn't too expensive. So how in the world would you go about buying it? Well, we go to the POE trade site and it's really quite easy. I'll show you how to do it. Here we are at the POE trade site. You can show the filters. Eventually after you play for a while using all these filters is actually pretty intuitive. It's actually a nice system. It's not too bad, but uh, we don't need any of that. It's pretty simple. Just type in the cowards. Trial Cursed Crypt Map, here we go, and that's it. Then just hit search, boom, and here they are. One thing that I would caution you about, again, remember if you're trying to buy a certain map, remember that it's got to be yellow and corrupted, and if you already pick it to be yellow and corrupted at a certain point, um, you can't change it again. So you can either buy a white one and, and alk it and corrupt it yourself, or just make sure that the one that you're buying has the mods that you need. But in this case, it's a legendary map. It doesn't matter. One thing to know here is if you just click this whisper, it'll just say, hello, friend, I would like to buy your map. They will invite you. You will click the little blue button to go to their hideout. And whoever has the item initiates the trade. So they have the map. You have the currency. You go to their hideout and you wait. Just be nice, just wait. They will open trade and you put the money in. It works the opposite way. When you start to sell stuff, you will initiate the trade when people come to your hideout. That's the basic etiquette. One thing is these maps are not exactly equal in terms of trading. One thing that I notice here is whenever people lift stuff many, many days ago, like these three, two days ago, 14 days ago, a lot of times they won't respond. So this one is not only the cheapest, but this person has listed it pretty recently. So this is going to be a good one to whisper or, you know, so this one was listed four hours ago. This would be a good one to whisper. This person going to sell it to you instantly. Again, as long as it's within your budget, you know, d don't break the bank here. Completing these maps and getting your full Atlas tree is massive. So that's many, many ways many ways to get free maps to help you along your journey. And remember, it's a lot easier. You got to do all the level one, twos, threes anyway. So it's actually better to go with a nice little slow progression than trying to jump way ahead. Because let's say you jump way ahead. You jump ahead to map, map tier 10. Well, that's cool that you're doing tier 10 maps, but you're just going to be forced later on to go back and do the baby ones anyway. You might as well knock out the easy ones while you don't have much gear, so it's still pretty easy for you. So don't feel like you're losing anything if you're seeing everybody like jump ahead of you. Don't worry about it. Slow and steady wins the race. It's perfectly fine as long as you're getting all of your passive points. All right, now it's time for the fun part. Well, I think this is fun probably because I'm a loser, but I actually think making maps is enjoyable, whereas other people can't stand it and they just buy maps from people all the time. So let's talk about the four different stages of rolling maps. The beginner stages are what's going to matter more for this video, but I might as well just show you um, all of the different ways that I know of, of how to add more and more juice to your maps. So for starters, you're just going to do the most basic things that we've already talked about. You just want to get the completion and make it nice and easy. So you'll throw an out, let me grab some currency here. Let's grab some alk orbs. Let's grab some scours. Let's grab some scrolls of identify. Let's grab some chisels and grab some val orbs. Back to the map tab. So if I were to run this cemetery map, 
the first thing that I would need to do is use an ALK orb on it. And then I hold ALT. If I need the completion, we would need to VAL orbit as well. Hit it with the VAL orb and hopefully we can still run it. So that would be the most basic way when you're first starting. Then if you are trying to just, maybe you're trying to run cemetery maps just to build some currency. You don't necessarily need the map completion anymore. You have most of the maps completed. You're just trying to get some currency so you can buy some basic items to just play the game and farm even harder later, right? Well, the first thing that you would do for T11 and higher when you start off with a basic map is you would apply four chisels to the white map. Don't apply it to a yellow map or a blue map because it's going to cost more. If you right click and hold shift on the chisel and apply it four times, you can see that we have made the item quantity and the quality 20% higher. This is generally a good strategy, again, when you're in red maps, the T11 and higher. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the item quantity and quality. Then we're going to hit it with the ALK orb. And then we are going to check and see if it has the right mods that we're looking for. That's going to be the next part of the video. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. But for now, let's just stick with rolling the maps themselves. So, for example, you don't want to do this map by map by map that's very, very slow. You want to do them in like bulk quantities when you have quite a few maps. You want to get them all ready in one fell swoop. So, what I would do here is first of all identify all my maps. There we go. Then you want to scour them down to white quality because remember, the white quality makes it cheaper for the chisels. So it's four chisels per map. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and we go on down. Now we're ready to ALK them. And then you go through and you ALK all of them and you would use the little trick that I'm gonna show you in a second to make sure that you can use all of these. Now, you wouldn't do this probably as a beginner player because you probably don't have the currency to do this. But the next level from here would be to also VAL orb them. Now when you VAL orb them, normally you're doing that just to get the atlas completion. But VAL orbing them can make them much more valuable in terms of the item quantity and the monster pack size is something like that. You can compare the difference of these non-corrupted ones let's just look at the top number 85 85 94 69 66 75 just say it's an average of about 80. look at these ones that i've actually rolled 113 104 118 115. you can see the fact that they're corrupted makes them a lot more valuable to run but when you corrupt them it comes with a risk because you don't never know what's going to happen when you corrupt them so one thing that could happen is they could become unidentified and they stay unidentified forever. When that happens, it's going to retain the same mods that it had before you corrupted it. So what that means is going through the step of applying the ALK orb to make it yellow and checking before you VAL it to make sure that it has mods that you can run is important because then when you get an unidentified map you will know oh i checked it before i did that so that unidentified map is good for me to run and it does give it a bonus too so the unidentified role is actually a great result there's also sextants that can buff unidentified maps which we'll get to later but the val orb can completely brick these maps they might add a reflect that you can't that you can't run or they might make the map so freaking hard that maybe you, your character could possibly run the affixes, but you just don't have the gear to do an 8 mod T16 map. You just can't. It's just too hard. Is also possible. So when you're farming in the beginning, the basic strategy is ALK and go. Scour it down to white. Use the chisels to pump them up. And then just use an alchemy orb to get 
some good stats on them. The next level would be taking the Val Orb and going boom, 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 and seeing which of these you could run. See how this became unidentified? I would have made sure beforehand to check the affixes that they were good. And now I can put this one over to the side because I know that this is good, even though it says unidentified. It should be a good one to run. Um, this one's unidentified. That should be a good one to run. And this one turned into a massive, what they call, 8-mod map with 121%. You can see how juicy this one is. Then you would think, oh, you got to go through and read everything. Nope, I'm going to show you that in a second. But there is even another level. Well, there's also delirium orbs, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. There is another level of rolling if you become very, very wealthy in the game. So it starts off the same. You just scour it all down. That's always the first step. Scour it down. Then you would apply the chisels. Let me show you a trick while I'm at it here. There is a very famous program called Xmouse that a lot of PoE players use. Watch this. So you open it up. It's just your mouse. And you say, I would like to remap scroll wheel up to left click. And I map scroll wheel down to left click. Apply. Okay. Go back to Path of Exile. My scroll wheel up and down does left click now. How does that help me? Well, you right click the chisel. And instead of left clicking four times, I just scroll my mouse wheel up and down. Look how fast I can quality them. If you were doing an entire inventory, you need to make sure that you got them all to level 20. How would you do that? In the search button, type 20. They're all highlighted, which means that they're all 20. Okay, showing you a couple little extra things. Okay, so anyway, for the full juicing, how would you do it? Started out the same, we scoured it down, then we chiseled it up, and then guess what we do? You Val Orb it straight away. What kind of sorcery is this? Why would you do that? It actually turned into a different map. The reason why you do that is the most valuable map that you can get is an 8 mod map like that. You just, it's pretty easy to tell. It's got a million, a million affixes and it just has a super high item quantity and pack size, right? It's easy to tell what those are. When you Val Orb a map, you have the same chance to get an 8 mod, whether it's white or whether it's yellow. It, it doesn't matter. And the, the biggest juicers in the game that are just going for mirrors and all that stuff, they don't have time to alk all the maps make sure that they've got good mods, and then they hit it with a Val Orb, and, oh, I didn't hit the 8 mod map, I didn't hit the big map, but I got a pretty good one that turned unidentified. I guess I'll just do that, and that's good enough. No. The Blasters are just going for the most ultimate maps that they can come up with. So a lot of people will just Val it straight away. And look, I got an 8 mod map right here. And so I've got to do the last one, Kapow, and these are just garbage now. So it's expensive because not only did you have to hit the 8 mod map, then you've got to check and make sure that the mods are good, but that's like the highest level of juicing. Another thing that is very nice about this method is it saves you a lot of time because you just quickly scour and then you chisel it up and then you just corrupt it all, and then you just check and see if it's good or not. The other way of alking it, oh, that doesn't have a good affix, scouring it back down, alk it again, okay, then I corrupt it, okay, unidentified goes here, 8 mod goes here, uh, where, where does this go, where does that go? It's so time-consuming that by the time you just YOLO through here and just find 10 really, really juicy maps that you've ran, you can get a lot more map completions done, which ends up paying you more than the cost of doing that entire process. So it's a little bit of a hierarchy here, but don't let all this overwhelm you. At the beginning, scour it down, chisel it up, throw an alk orb on it, and you're good. Now let's talk about the important thing. How do we filter through these maps to figure out what's good or bad? Let me show you what I think is one of, the, one of the coolest things about Path of Exile. I remember when I first started 
someone was trying to teach me something and then my chat kind of went off on this person saying, why are you showing racks how to do regular expressions? This is very advanced. You shouldn't be confusing him with this stuff. I got to be honest, now that I'm further in the game, I think this is one of the most beginner friendly things to understand. So I think you should understand that right from the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to poe.re for regular expression, or people call it regex for short. Okay, now what does this do? This lets you type in, for lack of a better word, a code or an expression into Path of Exile that will just find stuff for you very, very quickly. As Woody's playing some Diablo 3, getting ready for the last season um, on Friday. Okay, so anyway. We are going to go to Map Modifiers, and we are going to start from the beginning. Let me go to X Mouse and let me let me uncheck this. Remember this from the last step. Super godly tool here. Very easy to use. And let's go ahead and reset everything. So the first thing to understand about these expressions, which is kind of annoying. I hope they fix this in PoE two or in PoE one. They can only be fifty characters long. And the problem with that is I would love to just make one regex, one expression that will just solve everything for me. But since there's a character limit of 50 characters, then we're going to have to do it in two. But I promise you, this is very easy to understand. So the way that I would tell you to do this when you're running your maps is to think about it in two steps. The first step is what size are you looking for? Remember when we were uh, making our maps here, how some of them, when you just ALK them, might only go to like 78 item quantity. But after you make the godly 8 mod maps, they can go up to like 133, and then it becomes insane, right? So the first thing you could type in if you want, is, or the first thing you should do is make a size thing. You want to say, oh, I want it to be a quantity of, oh, at least 75, let's say. And then it just spits out some nonsense that makes no sense to us. Doesn't matter. Copy it. And then you can go into PoE and paste it in. Boom. Everything that's highlighted is going to be at least 75 at the top. And anything that isn't, 66, uh, just still a white map, 69 Keck W. It's really easy to understand, right? You just type in what you want, you paste it in, and then it works. But that, even that, can make it way easier on you than that. What you should do is you should make two of them. The first thing is for the size, and then you copy it. And the next thing would be for the mods that you don't want. So if you reset everything and you say, all right, well, my guy only does elemental damage. I don't do any physical damage. So I want to block elemental damage. And it has un some of the other worst affixes in the game at the top here. Oh, leeching is how I stay alive. Cannot leech, I can't play that. Um, oh, uh, I don't want to move slow, and uh, I don't want the reduced effect from non curse auras. Usually, your guide will tell you which ones you can't run. Okay, so I made this, and what it's doing is it will block any of these mods. So you copy it again, the same way you can go in here, and anything with those mods will be blocked. So you can see here that this one, I think, has the temporal chains. Is that what we blocked? The temporal chains, we blocked it out. And this one had uh, the non-curse auras that we blocked, right? So you can get rid of the worst offenders. But you don't want to go to poe.re.regularexpression every time you want to make maps, and you don't have to. When you have awakened PoE trade, if you remember from the last video, I told you that that app was essentially crucial to play the game. It helps you trade, which will probably be my next video, by the way, the beginner's guide to trading. If you hold shift and press space, it opens PoE trade and has some different things here. And there is a beautiful thing here called map rolling. Mm, it's so beautiful. Hit edit. 
and then you can make different rules. Add a rule, paste in your regular expression, and call this mods, as I already have here for my build. And this is going to forever block whatever you don't want within awakened PoE trade, which you will always have up anyway. Then you would save it, obviously. So here's how I make my maps. I run through, and we already made all of these, and there's some over here. So I have three little expressions. The first thing I hit is size. It's exactly the first thing that I showed you. I want a minimum quantity in pack size or whatever it is. And I set it very aggressively because we're trying to find headhunters, mage bloods, and mirrors. I mean, we're just full sending it here. So you can see that it, everything grayed out is not up to par. So these ones, we already rolled them. So these ones over here on the right side are actually just straight up dead to me. These are just gonzo. These two that we made were the correct size, and all these I already had made before I started the video. And these we haven't done yet. So we'll do those in a second as an example quickly so I can show you how easy this is. Okay, so these two are the right size. Perfect. They're godly, 118, 121. But do they fit the mods that I need? Shift space again and hit the mods button. And neither of them do. Wah, I can't run them. But I have one more thing called Aura. I have a friend. He's an Aura bot. He makes me a lot stronger than I am by myself. So if they're highlighted when I click Aura, I could run them when I'm playing with him. Nope, these are just dead to me. So what I do when they're totally dead to me, but there are the eight mod maps, I throw them in this little tab right here instead. And then I'm going to sell them to someone who has a different regular expression. The things that I don't like are certainly not the same as what other builds don't like. So don't get rid of them. All of these super juicy maps, I can sell them. They're worth a lot of money. We'll get into the trading into the next video. But that's, uh, it's not all, not all hope is lost. So why don't we try to do a live demonstration where I can try to do this quickly or as quickly as I can. And I'm going to show you step by step how I would make maps to play. Let's see if we can make any of these good, good to go. Remember, my expressions that I've made are very, very strict because I only want to run really, really juicy maps. And because I'm wearing all magic fine gear, they pretty much have to tailor to what I'm doing pretty well as well. So it, wouldn't be, it would not surprise me at all if after we make all these maps, I can't run any of them. But you certainly don't need to make, make it this extreme. But just as an example, first step, we go back here and move, bind these both to left click so we can do it quickly. And then I go into my currency tab. Okay, let's get rid of this for a moment. And first of all, we're going to need to identify the maps. And then we're going to need to scour them down to white. Then we're going to chisel them up. And then I'm not doing the ALK and check if it's good and then corrupt it and look for the unidentified. We're just going straight for eight, eight mod maps straight away. An advanced thing. You wouldn't do this but right away, but someday. Okay, so here we go. So first step. Right click and I'm using the mouse wheel, da 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 da, identify everything, done. Now we scour it down, da 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 da, we bring them all down to white quality. Then I'm going to type 20 in here because I want to chisel them up to 20%. Okay, mouse wheel going crazy, chisel them all up, and when they're all highlighted, they're all at 20, done. Now we val orb all of them. Let's see what happens. Oh, that one turned into a different map. Whatever. Da, 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 da. Go on through. Boom. Shift space. My first regular expression is the size. We made three that are the appropriate size. All of these are dead. They're all dead. So these are going in the trash can. Can't sell them because they're not 8 mod. I can't trade them to somebody else. And they're corrupted, so I can't do anything with them. Next check. The mods. We got one. Lit. I can run this one. And then let's check if I can run it with my Aurabot friend. Yep, I could run that one with my Aurabot friend. This is just a pretty juicy map that I just can't run. 
Usually when people buy these maps, they want them to have eight mods. They're called eight mod. I don't think this would count because it only has I think six mods. So actually we might have to vendor this one as well. That's it. I mean, that, that's how quickly I made the maps. Again, that was more of a late game strategy, but just to show you, did you see how quickly I was able to do that? What I just did there is I made, how, how many was it? 10, 15 maps. I instantly identified them, scoured them, chiseled them, valved them, and I read all 15 maps and what I could run and what I could sell instantly because of the regular expression and the macro within awakened PoE trade. To me, this is not advanced stuff. Having a little code that does all the reading for you and pasting it into a macro that you have access to forever to me is one of the most beginner friendly things possible. You can let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think this is like one of the first things that you should learn. So what we have covered are the basics of making maps and also how to progress through your mapping atlas tree. How would you go to the next step to juice your maps even further? Well, there are some the super, super valuable things that you need to acquire in the game called your Void Stones. So these Void Stones are acquired after you beat a couple of the bosses. you got to beat the Uber Elder, you've got to beat the Maven, you've got to beat the Eater of Worlds, and you've got to beat the Searing Exarch. When you beat all of them, they're going to give you these Void Stones that you can socket in right here. The Void Stones do a couple of things for you. First, each one gives you a 25% chance um, to make each map tier higher. And another thing, the, maybe not the most important thing, but very important thing, is it allows you to apply sextants to a map, which is part of juicing it up. That's going to be our next topic. That's why we need our void stones. And finally, when you get all the void stones, it makes all of the maps T16, even the little baby level one ones that you were doing, the ones, twos, threes, and fours. Do you see how all of mine are T16? You can and finally you can farm whatever map you want, whatever's good for your currency strategy at the max level. Also, over here, there are a lot of different ways to get favorite maps. And the favorite maps are going to be a way for you to get more of your favorite map. Now, another very cute trick about favorite maps is one of the best ways to do it is to pick most of your favorite maps as the one you want to run, let's say Cemetery. But Path of Exile naturally has a very high chance to give you a connected map to whatever map you're running. So I go here, and if I type Cemetery, and I look for it here, here is the cemetery. And I ask myself, well, what maps are close to the cemetery? There's Ancient City, there's Overgrown Shrine, there's Tropical Island. Tropical Island is a big fan favorite. The cemetery and Burial Chambers and Jungle Valley are very popular. We'll get to that in a little bit and explain to you why. But one super cute strategy is to put most of your favorite slots as the cemetery, and by the way, just mousing over each little empty slot here will tell you what you need to do to unlock that favorite map slot. There, there's different objectives. You can just read them. Um, but So you put all of them as cemetery, but you put one of them as a connected map, let's say Tropical Island. So then what happens is you're going to get a lot of cemeteries because most of them are here in your favorite map slots. But you might not get enough to sustain yourself, especially if you go with those like really, really juicing strategies where you keep using the Val orbs and you use the regular expressions that require it to be very, very juicy. You might run out, but you will have a very, very high chance to get tropical island maps. And when you run the tropical island maps, well, guess what map is connected to tropical island? your favorite one. And after you run five of these, with all of these being your favorite maps, having a higher chance to drop, you will be able to replenish your cemeteries that easily. So in conclusion, a very, very nice strategy is 
every single map slot but one, put it as your favorite map, cemetery. And the other one, put it to a, your favorite connected map. In this case, it would probably be Tropical Island. And then when you run out of cemetery maps, run a couple tropical islands, and the amount of cemeteries that you will get, because they're favorited and connected, will be substantial. And you can go right back to farming cemeteries. One common mistake is to put all of your maps at cemetery, then you will miss out on the opportunity to do that little um, tricky thing. But another important thing, back to the void stones, you absolutely don't have to do all of these yourself. When we get into the trading thing, I'll kind of show you. But there are ways, like for example, my character, at least as a baby lightning arrow character, has zero defense, none. It is hard for me to kill these bosses. I killed two of them just straight up. I killed Shaper and Uber Elder, or maybe it was Searing Exarch, Fireball Guy and, I don't know, Magnet Guy, whoever it was. But the Maven and one of the other ones, Chad advised me that it would be very difficult for my very low-budget character to try to kill that boss. So they said, one of the smartest things you can do is just run your maps and build up some currency, and you can buy a kill. And these kills are not that expensive relative to the benefit that you would gain from having your four void stones for the higher chance and for the sextants and things like that. So one of the actual best beginner strategies you can do is to farm currency and learn how to buy the kills so you can get your void stones. By the way, this is perfectly legal. This is not in TOS or don't, kill, don't, don't let grinding gear games know that you're doing this. Selling boss services, that is how some players make money. Some players don't like to map. Some players like to kill the bosses and would like to get people their void stones. That's how they make their money. You make your money however you want to. You want a boss, you want to roll sextants all day in your hideouts, I'm going to show you in a second. You want to do mapping, whatever you like. Consider buying your void stones as one of your first expenses, and then that will show you how to really juice your maps in the next step. Now it's finally time for the fun part. How are people making these godly maps and getting such high currency per hour and buying all these fun items like Headhunter and Mageblood? I'm never going to have that. Oh, yes, you will. Let me show you. So back to the Void Stones. You can actually apply what's called a sextant to the Void Stone to make your maps better. Now, for the most part, you should usually buy these on the trade site. I'll show you how to do that probably in the next video. But the basic idea is, is you take one of these, an awakened sextant, okay? And it just re-rolls a modifier on a void stone. Right now, I don't have anything on my void stone, but I just right-click this and boom, let's see what I get. <sighs> That's my favorite thing, an additional Legion encounter. Mmm, I love Legion. So I actually play Legion, so this is godly for me, right? You could actually go through and put four different powers on your void stones, and then you could run your maps. Now, there's different ways to modify how powerful these sextants are. For example, you can get more uses. That's kind of like a more advanced thing. For most people, you'll just buy the sextants that you want anyway. Let me show you the basic idea. What some people, some of the richest people in Path of Exile, they don't do anything. They don't go kill bosses, they don't go run maps. All they do all day is take these sextants, and this is kind of an example, and they just throw them all on here and just get, get different powers. You can't take reflected damage, magic pack size, two additional Val items, yada, yada, yada. Okay, and then what they do is they go over here and they buy compasses. Okay, I've got a million compasses. They're right here. Then what you could do is instead of running the maps with these powers, you can store them in this compass, just like that. And then you already know what's coming next. Now we go on the trade site, and I say, listen, I've been in my, I've been in my hideout for 15 straight hours. I have uh, 30 Legion compasses. Who wants to buy 30 Legion compasses? Who's running Legion all day? Believe it or not, just sitting here rolling these sextants and pulling out the really good powers. 
putting them in these compasses and selling them to people is a great way to make money. There's a thousand ways to make money in this game. So they'd go through and just keep applying the sextants and stealing the good powers on the compasses all day long. Anyway, that, that's, that's not what we're doing here. So let's, uh, let's get back to the point here. Let's put these away. Okay, so for your build, there will be certain compasses. Again, it'll probably be in your guide that will help you make a lot of money. Now, here's one thing to understand. This is one thing that I, the pr mental process that I went through as a new player, and I can, I can tell you my conclusion after, after doing it for three straight weeks. In fact, I've been playing a lot. A lot of people think that I'm just getting super lucky with everything, which I am, but I've also killed 2.6 million monsters. 2.6 million. So I've been playing a lot. Anyway, um, I was wondering when I was going through this, is it really worth it? Because some, some, some of these sextants to put on your uh, void stones, they're expensive. Is it really worth it? And the answer is yes. You know the famous saying in real life, you got to spend money to make money? Absolutely applies. The amount of currency that I was bringing in after kind of really juicing my maps with sextants, and right after this I'm going to show you scarabs, was colossal. You spend money to make money. So what I did, once I finally got enough currency, is I made four little stacks of compasses of exactly the ones that I needed in my guide. This is the one, no, no, no. This is the one that's so expensive. Slaying enemies close together can attract monsters beyond this realm. This one of these compasses costs more than one divine. That means I'm spending more than a fourth of, of a divine on every map just from this one compass. That's expensive. Some people don't even have one divine total. But this is a good example of how kind of the rich get richer. It was so hard for me to farm my first headhunter. Took me a week straight of farming a chaos orb here, a chaos orb there, doing the basic Alk and Go strategy, da 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 da. And now I'm just fully, fully juiced in sext and scarabs. This map costs a divine, this map costs two divine, what, whatever. And then I didn't have that much money today and I already have 208 divines. I, it's not that I magically became a much better player, it's just you can ramp super hard. So if you're watching this video and you're like, God, Rax, I, I never find anything. I'm lucky if I find a divine orb, a league. Remember, you're probably not far off from hitting that inflection point and just a little bit far off from putting together the right strategy to start making the kind of currency that other people have, assuming that you've got the play time. Okay, so anyway, the four I'm running, I'm playing Legion. And I play strong boxes, and the strongest thing is attracting monsters from beyond. It just puts so many more monsters in your map, more chances to get loot. So I have one set of Legion encounters, one set of beyond, one set of strong boxes are enraged, and one set of more strong boxes. Instead of going to my void stones, as someone might do incorrectly, and just randomly applying awakened sextants and getting cannot take reflected damage map map pack size and map bosses. I'm using the correct things all the time for specifically what I'm doing, and that's why I make so much money. So I go here, okay, and I know when it's another round. I've made these four little columns, one of each right here. I'll show you a super grandmaster trick. A lot of people don't know this who have been playing for 10 years. Watch this trick. Assuming that they're all unique and in a row, hold shift, right click, and click each void stone once. Watch what happens. Boom, 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 boom. Bet you. I'm going to see it in the comments. There are people that have been juicing for years that probably didn't know that trick. Shift, right click, boom, 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 boom. It applies all the sextants in order from your inventory. When, I, when someone told me that in my stream, there was a tidal wave of message. I've been playing this game for five years. I never knew that. Oh, my God. So anyway, there's a little trick. 
So that's one way to juice is with sextants. The other way is with scarabs. Scarabs are kind of the same concept. You just put them in your map device instead of putting it on your void stones. It's kind of the same thing. So this is another very nice tab in the, in the uh, microtransaction shop that will help you is the fragment tab. And you're going to get scarabs. Scarabs are simple to understand. You just throw it in here with your map in order to make it better. And you can just read what it does. It's really not that complicated. For example, I run Polished Legion. Now you see there is a progression here. They get more and more powerful. But funny enough, powerful doesn't necessarily mean better. And that's for a few reasons. For example, let's read Polished Legion. It contains an additional Legion encounter and it contains a War Horde. Cool. This one says it contains an Legion encounter, a War Horde, and is accompanied by a General. You want to know what that's code word for? Legion is accompanied by a General. It's a one way ticket to Pound Town, USA, population U. The Generals. I've ran so many legions. I've killed 2.6 million monsters. I did legion the entire time. First of all, the generals never drop jack shit, and they are a million times harder to kill than the other guys. You don't want your legions to have a general. The generals suck. And winged are godly because they give you two legion encounters, which is massive. But then again, you're always guaranteed to have the general. So if you're really, really pumping, the winged is better for the two legions in the map, but most people run polished because it gives you one legion with no general. So that's actually for a lot of people just straight up better. So you can read through it. A lot of times the winged are so rare and they're so valuable that sometimes winged doesn't really make sense to run anyway, unless you're really, really juicing. So a lot of people that I know that are even kind of in the end game, they still run Gilded because Gilded is quite good. So here's what I do. I run Reliquary Gilded, which is more uniques. I run Polished Legion. But remember how I told you earlier, sometimes I play with an Aura bot that makes me way stronger. Then we run Winged and we get revenge on the, all of those generals. We blast them into a new universe. I run Gilded Ambush because I'm playing Strongbox Legion. So, of course, I run the Legion and the Strongbox, along with more uniques. That's how we find the Headhunters and the Mage Bloods. By the way, I have two Headhunters, five Mage Bloods dropped. And then Divination cards is very, very valuable. There's also some tricks here where you can actually change the not valuable Scarabs into the more valuable ones, and you can actually sell all your Scarabs that you don't use. We'll talk about that in another video. Right now we're talking about maps and juicing. So here we go. I go over here, I apply my four scarabs for my build, and then I would throw in my map. My chat has informed me many times it's a cardinal sin not to put the map in the middle. So put the map in the middle, otherwise they're going to get you. So the final thing that you can do to juice here, and by the way, there is another layer of juicing called delirium orbs, where you can make the monsters delirious and it like vomits you out um, different loot. When you in when you put a map to a hundred percent delirious, that's pretty crazy. But that's like some really advanced stuff. Um, so you can pay a fee to have something additional applied to your maps and. Wouldn't you know, let's read what Ambush does. Area contains four additional strong boxes. Well, let's see, I'm running strong box and Legion. I will pay four chaos orbs to put four strong boxes in my super juiced map. That is worth way more than four chaos when you get to this level. The, the rich get richer, right? So you can pick one of these powers as well. Um, okay, I should have explained this. Let's just do it now. This is ways to track progress towards different things to fight certain bosses, kind of like how you were getting the things to get your void stones that you might have paid for. Um, another thing that these things do is they will put little altars in your map that give you a choice. It'll say, you incur this penalty in order to get this reward. Would you like to do this? 
probably a little bit more of an advanced thing here. Um, when you're in the early game, some of these penalties are terrible when you have bad gear and you just end up chain dying all the time. But the, the general idea of the altars within the map, you'll see them. When you, when you pick one of these that you're going toward, you'll see them clear as day. The general idea is you want to pick the global um, powers, which would mean the one that says it impacts you as a player. There is also one for the blue ones that say that the monsters can drop divine orbs, but this is very rare. I've never seen, I've never seen it one time. That's how rare it is. But that's like the godliest one. But in general, you're trying to pick the one that makes you weaker because it usually gives you like quantity and rarity in the map, which is the best thing that you can get. So just a little bit on that. Um, and your build that you're following, whatever your mapping strategy is that we looked on Maxwell last time, if you go to maxwell.gg slash PoE, there's a lot of different, um, different ways you can farm Blight or Ultimatum or Legion, Abyss, whatever it is you like to do. It will usually spec into either the Eater of Worlds or the Searing Exarch. It usually specs into one or the other. And that will determine which one you pick here. You can also pick one of these, which is going to bring in one of our little friends here. We can help hunt beasts. We can go into the temple with Alva. We can go with Nico, um, which does the, uh, the little soul fight things. Or we can do the uh, syndicate. Right now, for my particular spec, I'm going into the temple, so I'm selecting this every time, and it's going to give me 47 uses on my red maps. Okay, so another way to juice your maps. Anyway, that was a lot of talking. I'm not trying to overwhelm you. Let me show you a very nice beginner trick that you can do. If you don't want to bother with all this, buying all the... You might, another question you might be asking, how do you get the sections? How do you get the scarabs? You can just buy them on the, on the auction house or what is this called, the trade site. Another thing that you can do is you will be getting these fragments here. And I think at one point these fragments actually used to be valuable, but not so much anymore. So, for example, if you only want to throw like a legion scarab and maybe a divination scarab in there, if you throw these as a fragment in your map tab, it'll actually make, give it a little bit of juice as well. I used this when I was poor to make it a little bit more valuable while I was farming my first head hunter. Anyway, that's probably a lot more than you ever wanted to know about juicing. The basic idea is on your void stones, you can put sextants. It's got four uses, so we can run it with four maps. If you're wondering, should you pay the money for this? Should you pay the money for the scarabs once you're strong enough to run these maps? Will you get a return? Yes, you will get a return tremendously once you're strong enough. And you can, if I didn't mention this earlier, you can unlock the fifth slot by throwing in emblems, and then you have to kill a general in that, in that um, area. I think it's called a five-way, and that will unlock your fifth slot if you're wondering why you only have four and why I have five. And then you can pick one of these additional powers and one of these little helpers. If it will help you with your spec, then you're going to want to follow whichever, whichever atlas thing you're doing. You're going to want to do these and pick the altars in general that give you global quantity and rarity. And let me say one more tiny thing about this. We're getting a little bit too advanced for the beginner's guide, but let me tell you one more thing. The altars have three choices. You either debuff yourself, you buff the minions, or you buff the boss. And in all three cases, you get a reward. If you rush to kill the boss right away in a map, then every altar that spawns will not have the boss as an altar choice. This is what you want. Because again, you usually want the global player debuffs. Because it gives you the most bang for your buck. So if you're ever wondering why people are rushing the boss and killing it first, depending on the map, it's because they want all of the altars to be global and not to buff the boss. Let's hit one final topic on maps, and then we will end the video. I don't know how long it is, but it's probably too long at this point. 
the last question you might have is, okay, Rax, that's cool. I understand the progression. I understand different ways to roll my maps, check the regular expression. I, I kind of know how to juice it when I get a little stronger. But what maps should I even run? And the answer is, it depends. So one thing is, what maps do you enjoy running? For example, I think it's pretty universally agreed upon that the most valuable map is burial chambers. Why? Well, burial chambers can drop the fortunate, which is a very nice divination card, and it's fairly common to drop, which gives you divine orbs. And it can also drop the doctor, which is very rare, but a doctor is going to give you part of a headhunter. So not only might you be trying to get your own headhunter, but if you're not, you can sell it for a pretty penny. Um, so burial chambers is super, super popular. I hate burial chambers because it has, I think, five different floors. Five floor at the beginning, the middle, the third, the, the room to the boss, and then the boss room. Five floors. And it's very compartmentalized, and I just hate it, and it gives me many, many ways to die on my very squishy magic-finding character. Um, another thing that strongly determines what's a good map for you to run is what is the Atlas strategy that you're running. Let me give you an example. I'm running Legion. Legion spawns a lot of monsters in an area. So by far, the best kind of map for me is a giant wide open map where my legion can spawn as many monsters as possible. If I, if I went into a map that's very compartmentalized or has tons of narrow hallways, every time I get a legion, I'm not going to get very many monsters. And I'm just, my profits are going to be cut in half before I even begin. Or you might be playing a certain build or strategy, for example, maybe Blight, where you have to protect a certain tower, and maybe certain areas that are good for Blight might be terrible for Legion, and you might want to do those kinds of maps. But with all that being said, nobody likes a wishy-washy answer. Let me tell you three of the most popular ones. I already talked about Burial Chambers. Another super popular one is Cemetery. Cemetery is a big, wide-open map, and it drops two cards that are super good. Brother's Gift just straight up gives you five divines, and I find it to be way more common than the Doctor. I've gotten so many Brother's Gifts, and the number of, I've only found one Doctor ever in Burial Chambers, so the drop rate is way higher. Um, there's Brother's Stash, which gives you five Exalted Orbs. That used to be the best currency. That's not a bad one either. And you can also get um, the Union, I believe, which gives you a ton of Gem Cutter's Prisms. Those sell really well too. But Cemetery is very valuable, big, wide-open map. Awesome for Headhunter because you can just use all of your powers all on the same floor without going through five different floors. Another really popular one is Jungle Valley. Jungle Valley is kind of like Cemetery. It's just a big open jungle. And the nice thing is, is the boss room is considered like a separate entity, I believe. So the altars, remember how I said you have to rush the boss and kill the boss first to wipe away the boss altars so you get a global altar? I believe Jungle Valley is one of the maps, hopefully I'm not misspeaking here, I'm pretty sure, where the, you, never get the boss, um, you never get the boss altars from the beginning. So actually, if you want to, you can just clear the whole map and get all the altars straight away. Jungle Valley also drops the fortunate card that Burial Chambers does, and it's just a nice layout. It's just a big open jungle, very easy to navigate, very easy to kite monsters. Those are the three that I see people running the most. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this video. Again, I read all the comments on the previous beginner guide. I would appreciate your feedback. How did this video go for you? Did it help you? Would you like me to continue it? If you do, let me know. If I said some things wrong, please let me know. If there's some big thing that I missed or somewhere where I misspoke, let me know and I'll try to pin it to the top or maybe I'll make a comment with some things that I forgot. But very, very quickly, let me try to summarize it. Get through your Atlas progression. Make sure that you have magic 1 through 5, rare 6 through 10, rare and corrupted higher. Um, Commander Kirik is your friend. 
then buy maps from him. Don't buy the maps that cost chaos orbs, but get the ones that you need by holding alt. Um, you can also just get free missions from him here in the different tabs. You can use scouting reports to re-roll them. Remember about your favorite map slots. Remember to connect one adjacent map to refill your favorite map slots. Kill the bosses for your void stones or buy the kill for your void stones. Not against TOS. Very smart strategy early on. You can apply sextants here and scarabs here for juicing while selecting this to be applied for your maps. Going for one of the certain bosses going for the global altars and boss rushing if you need to, and picking a, one of the little friends to accompany you. Remember, for rolling maps, that you first identify, then you scour, then you chisel up, then you alk orb. Remember, to, in order to search, use shift space on awaken poe trait and poe.re to make your regular expressions. Make one for size. And then make one for your mods so you can find all of the good stuff. Remember, if you're going to Val Orb a good, a good map, otherwise, when it becomes unidentified, it has the same stats that it had before. So if you check the mods first, then it becomes unidentified, that's a good one to run. Some of the favorite maps right now are Burial Chambers, Cemetery, and Jungle Valley. But check your guide for whatever strategy you're using. It might recommend specific maps for you there and do it like that. And hopefully that kind of explained everything about maps. One final key thing, if you're ever wondering, is it worth it to apply all of these sextants to my map and to pay for all of these scarabs to apply? Is it gonna actually pay off? Yes, it's kind of like the rich get richer. But remember, you might not have been so far away from the point where you could have been generating a massive amount of currency and farmed all the big ticket items that you have always been looking for. So anyway, I hope that this was beginner friendly. It's kind of the whole point. And if it wasn't, let me know. If you enjoyed it, I'll try to make more of these videos in the future. And of course, we'll be making a trillion guides for PoE2. I'm not going to be the noob in PoE2. Hopefully, I'll be the expert over there. Thank you.